What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the series Getting Easy with Airflow. This is the third video of the series in which we are going to be looking at setting up your own minimal airflow setup on your local machine using Docker. The reason I say minimal is because we are going to use the simplest executor of Airflow that is available, which is sequential executor. The reason for that is just to help you get started with the Airflow so that you can play around with it, create your DAGs and experiment and learn how Airflow works. So to get started, you first have to make sure that you have Docker installed in your machine. They have this available for Mac, Windows and Linux. So download this for your own required operating system. The reason we are using Docker is because it is a containerized solution. So you don't have to install all of the dependencies on your local machine. In, instead, we'll create a compact environment, which is very easy to spin up and it is cost effective and you can fastly deploy it on any of your environment. I already have it installed. So after downloading and installing, you can test this by typing the command Docker version. Mine is 20.10.7. We'll be using the tool provided by Docker called Docker Compose. That is a small orchestration system for Docker that manages multiple containers for us. So make sure you have that installed as well, which already comes with the Docker when you install it. Yeah, so we'll be using Docker Compose version 1.29.2 with the following build. So the official Airflow has already provided us the Docker Compose YAML definition for Airflow. You can head over to this and click here which by default uses Celery Executor. But for the simplicity, we will first be going for the sequential one. So we will amend this file and let us begin. So here is the modified Docker Compose file. Let us go through what we are doing here by starting off with the services. So services are actually uh, defining what sets of containers we need to run as part of this Docker Compose, in which we have like three major components that are required by Airflow. We have MySQL database, used for storing all of the metadata database of Airflow. We have Airflow scheduler and we have the Airflow web server. All of these components have one thing in common. I would add this on this one as well. So Airflow common is a definition which defines the image which we are using here 2.1.1, Python 3.8. And in this definition, we have some environments as well defined as Airflow common environments, which will be used by our scheduler and the web server. So Airflow scheduler uses Airflow common. The command it uses is the scheduler. Then we are using the environments defined over here, telling the Airflow what is the address of the database, SQL Alchemy connection. In this case, we will be referencing this to our MySQL, which is a service that we defined here with the root user and password all as Airflow. We will allow the Airflow to load all of the example tags for us. You can view all of the available configurations of Airflow on their official website. As an example, you can see the default configuration file on their GitHub page as well. As an example, we are telling Airflow to use the executor as sequential executor, which falls under the core component of the CML file. Either we can provide our own config file to the Airflow, or we can override these variables by using environment variables, by using the format as Airflow, which will remain as constant, underscore, underscore, the name of the section, and underscore, underscore, then the name of the variable. Then we have volumes defined that will be used by Airflow to store the logs. And if we have this tag folder defined in our local machine, Airflow is going to pick up that tag as well. You will see how that works in our next video. We will be writing our own tag. We are mentioning the user here just to make sure that the Docker user and your local machine user has the same permissions. This is only required if you are in Linux or Mac. Make sure you have a .env file on the same folder where you have this Docker file with the same permissions as we have mentioned on your Docker Compose. And finally, we are saying that all of the services that are using this Airflow common definition must have to wait for MySQL to be healthy first. So this healthy status is checked through the health check, which is defined over here. So it runs this command after every two seconds to make sure that this service is running fine. And then we have a Docker volume defined as MyDB, which inside the Docker container uses this volume. 
So this volume will be shared across all of the containers that are running on this service. So we are defining it over here in the end. Moving to the Airflow init service that uses Airflow common using this image and these environment variables and all of these that we discussed earlier. What it does is overrides the entry point of this image because by default in that image, the default entry point is Airflow. So that's why you see in our scheduler, we are only telling this container to run the command scheduler because the first command in the entry point is Airflow. So in this way, it runs Airflow scheduler and then the scheduler starts. But in this case, what we are doing is we are overriding the entry point, telling this container to use the bash script and run whatever command we are going to tell you on the command section. So first off, what we are doing is running Airflow DB in it, which initializes all of the database components. Then we are saying to update the database, which makes sure that the schema of the database is up to date. And finally, we are creating an admin user of Airflow by using the Airflow users command. Then the role we are giving it to the user as admin, the username is admin. We are setting the email address. We are giving the password as Airflow. So the newer version of Airflow image does has an environment variables to do this job for us. As an example, you can see here that if you set this environment as true, Airflow DB upgrade true, it actually at the back of the scene runs this command in it and upgrade. And if you set this variable as true, it actually creates the admin user with the following username and password. But I don't prefer this way of using it because you are hiding away the things that are actually happening at the back of the scene in the Airflow for the developers. So if you are learning any to understand what and how Airflow works, you need to get yourself familiar with what commands you need to use. And of course we have more flexibility not only you can create the admin user, but you can create more users by writing in more commands and you can like add custom connections. You can set local variables on the Airflow and whatnot. So you basically have much more flexibility by doing this way. And of course, we are using the common environment variables that we defined over here to use the SQL alchemy connection and load examples. So the scheduler container is as simple as you run the command Airflow scheduler. Of course, we have a restart policy as always. So if the container dies, the Docker Compose will restart itself. You have volumes defined. Well, in fact, you don't need that because we already have those defined on the commons volumes. So you don't need that over there. My bad. Yeah, so it is depending on, well, in fact, we don't need that as well because yeah, we have that defined over here. Then the last one is the Airflow web server, which runs Airflow web server command to spin up the web server. I'm using 8081 as the local host uh, port because usually my Docker desktop uses 8080 port. So on the right side, you have the port which is used inside the Docker and on the left side, you have the port is the one that will be used on your local machine. Then we have a health check and restart policy always and environments variables. So now you got to know what this Docker Compose file is doing. So let us spin up our Airflow. First of all, we are going to execute the Airflow init container that will set up the database. So for that, let us write docker compose up airflow init. So wait till this uh, MySQL container completes because airflow init depends on MySQL service. You can also view the logs of the Docker containers from the Docker desktop app. So as you can see, oh, Airflow init is being executed now. So this is initializing the database. It will update the schema. And at last it should create the admin user. Cool, as you can see, Airflow admin user has been created after it has completed the migration. So we are now ready to spin up the Airflow scheduler and the web server. So now let us spin up all of the components of Docker Compose. So for that, we are simply going to say Docker Compose up. As you can see, Airflow init container says admin already exists in the database. Okay, it looks like everything is up and running now. So let us go to the browser and view our Airflow web server, which should be running on localhost 8081. And as you can see on the localhost 8081, we directly land into our login page, which is admin and the password was Airflow. We will jump 
right into the Airflow main page. So these are all of the example tags that are loaded into Airflow by default. And of course you can hide them by turning this parameter as all false. And yeah, from here you can view all of the tags, you can trigger the tags, you can view the logs and the status of each of the tags and the tasks and, and almost everything you can control from here. As an example, if you look at our example bash operator, just simply turn this icon to enable and this tag is going to trigger. And don't forget to turn on this auto refresh to view the updates in real time. It will relatively be slower as I told you before, this is a sequential executor. It executes one task at a time, which is okay for learning purpose. Fast forwarding this and you can see we have DAGs which are running now and you can also view the graph view where the green color indicates the task has been successful and the pink ones represent they have been skipped, which is the behavior of the specific DAG. Because we are logged in as an admin user, so we can see all of the admin features like security and admin panel. And Airflow version 2 also has full-fledged API. You can get the documentation either via Swagger UI or Read Docs. So basically you can control your Airflow by the API because they have almost all of the API commands for each and everything to get the connections, to trigger the tag, to get the tag status, event logs, and of course, whatnot. As you can see, Docker is already throwing all of the logs into our log directory. We have the scheduler logs, we have each of the task logs. And of course, if you want to add your own custom tags, you can simply add the DAG file into this DAG directory. We'll be looking at that into our next video where we will learn how to write your own first DAG. So till then, stay tuned. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please don't forget to like and comment and definitely share this with others. If you are first time into this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such kind of useful stuff to you in the future. Till then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.